Namaste. The light and love of the divine in me honors and greets the light and love of the divine in each and every one of you here this morning. Um, I'm going to try some something different this morning. Hold on. Um, I, I know that, um, first of all, it's a beautiful day. I'm so happy that it's cool. And we had, we actually had some rain here in Templeton. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it was, it was lovely. Uh, it feels like fall. Um, I love to wear warm, snuggly clothes. Yay, yippee, it's great. Uh, and uh, there's, there's kind of a shift in the energy um, in the nation today and um, nothing is settled. There's still unrest, but, but you know, you feel like that there's some, there's movement taking place and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but I just wanted to, this is a tech, technique, techie uh, item. And that is, you know, when, when we do these Zoom calls and we're speaking, uh, we can see you all, but when you see us talking, uh, it may not look like we're looking at you, that we're looking at something else. But in order for, for us to connect with you, we have to look here. We can't look up here at the camera. Then we're just looking at nothing. So if it looks like I'm looking out into space or looking down at something or not looking at anything in particular, I apologize for that. It's just kind of the way the technology works, but um, we'll do the, do the best we can. I can see you um, and, and I love you and I love looking at your faces when we're talking. So just, just a note about that. So who we are, you know who we are. We are the Awakening Way spiritual community. We are a new thought spiritual community in the lineage of Dr. Ernest Holmes. And, you know, I, I think about um, the gifts of this teaching are so vast and so incredibly valuable um, at times like this. Well, all the time, really, but uh, especially when things start going sideways or you start feeling... Uh, just odd or you feel out of sorts or it feels like the world is crumbling or your life is crumbling. This teaching provides all of us with a way to think, tools to use, uh, opportunities to gather together to get support, uh, to help us move through life and, and more than just move through life, but to experience and enjoy life in new and greater ways because it is a positive living teaching. It's about finding the good. It's about finding the love. You know, we talked about uh, we're shifting from being seekers to being finders. It's about finding all of those wonderful things that are right there where we are. And so all we have to do is wake up, awakening ways, and we provide ways to help all of us wake up and awaken to the goodness that is all around us. And most importantly, the goodness that is within us that we seem to forget so, so very quickly, it just seems to vanish. So we provide many opportunities. We provide, you know, uh, in, in limited ways, we're providing uh, meditations and workshops and those things uh, on a very scarce spaces, but um, still available. Uh, we provide gatherings like this, wonderful music from our incredible musicians that are so uh, wonderful, so giving, so uh, talented and bless us with their gifts. Uh, we offer prayers, we offer all kinds of support. And you know, for me, the most important thing is to know that there are people there that these people, whether we're seeing them all every day or not, when we close our eyes, we know that they're there, the spiritual community. And the spiritual community is beyond just our local community. You know, we have people from, from Petaluma, from, from uh, uh, up north that are uh, gathering with us and, and Rona Park and Santa Rosa and, and even further north. So there are people here that are uh, still in the community the Awakening Ways community. We're all that. So I just want to thank you so much for being here. Whatever it was that brought you here this morning and wherever you go when, when this little gathering is over for now, for this moment in time, 
welcome home. We've been waiting for you. So true, so true. And so if you will, I'd like um, to begin with just a, a, a brief little meditation and, and a, a, an opening invocation. And I like, to, I like to begin with just little words of wisdom from Ernest Holmes. And so just listen to these words of inspiration. He says, we should awake to the living presence of the eternal God within each one of us and enter into a realization of a new peace and joy. As we come to surrender all littleness and all fear and doubt, that great river of life flowing from the mind of God will renew our vigor, remake our strength, enable our being, heal our bodies, and bring peace to our hearts. Take a breath with that. And we feel that reality within every cell of our being. For we know that we are part of that great indivisible wholeness that we call spirit, that we call source, that we call God, the divine, whatever it is that we call it, it is all in all, it is all things. And we dwell within it as part of it. It is in us and we are in it. And we move and live most definitely and have our being in this divine and sacred and holy energy. And as we open and awaken to that truth, we feel the energy, we feel the peace, we feel the joy, we feel the love, we feel that life force literally pulsing through our veins. That life is our life, literally and figuratively, right here and right now. And so we open and give thanks for that. We celebrate this day and all the good that's coming our way, the magnificent words that will flow from Dr. Frank this morning, awakening us to new information, to new ways of understanding, to new ways of looking out at the world and looking within our own selves. We give thanks for the music that always balances and harmonizes our bodies in that great vibration of the spheres. So grateful for that. We celebrate one another. We celebrate the opportunity to be together and to feel this incredible love as it expresses through each and every one of us. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day, as is each and every day. And we celebrate it. We give thanks for it. We say yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I give thanks and let it be. And so it is. Amen.
Namaste. Good morning, beloveds. You know, today is my son Tony's birthday. And uh, I'm not going to tell you how old he is because I feel old enough for both of us. Um, Tony and I are on opposite sides of the fence politically and in other ways. And while I disagree with him, um, I love him. And I may disagree with him, but I'll defend to the death his right to his opinions and his beliefs. So happy birthday, Chief. We've just completed uh, one of the most divisive elections in our nation's history. And it appears that it's over. I have only this to say about that. <clears throat> the result has made it clear that this nation is so evenly divided that there is no majority or minority. There's just us. And we need to find a way to live with that. Uh, writer Annie Gottlieb wrote, respect is appreciation of the separateness of the other person, of the ways in which he or she is unique. This is a time when we all need to honor the uniqueness in others more than anything else, and maybe more than any time in our history. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about the election. Uh, one of the definitions of appreciation that we don't think about very often in regard to spirituality is an increase in value, an increase in value. Recently, Terry and I sold our home of 28 years um, and we downsized and our home had appreciated remarkably from when we built it in 1992. Um, it had, we could say, appreciated in value. The right investments appreciate in value. The reverse can also be said to be true in spirituality. I guess it's not the reverse. It's just different inverse. That which we appreciate gains in value. That which we appreciate gains in value. Holmes said, appreciation instantly moves you into a receptive state so that you're open to all good things. <clears throat> this works especially well with money and all forms of abundance. Appreciate the money, the love, the good that's coming into your life. Recognize it as it comes into your life and it will multiply, it will grow. Appreciation instantly moves you into a receptive state so that you're available to receive it. In the 1860s in Colorado, there was a gold strike, huge gold strike. And the miners just feverishly dug out this gold from the ground and everything that wasn't the gold, they threw off to the side and huge piles of debris called tailings. Well, eventually the gold ran out. And then someone discovered that those tailings they'd been throwing off to the side because they didn't appreciate them <laughs> were loaded with silver. And so they went back through the stacks of tailings and people became very, very rich mining the silver that came out of the tailings. Appreciation is the choice to see the love of God in everything. There's a Jewish proverb that says, wise men count their blessings, fools their problems. What the opposite of appreciation is called depreciation. What we depreciate loses value. Anything we depreciate in our lives loses value. If you've ever, on your income tax, done a, a write-off on, on cars, on computers, on anything you own, you know that what you've done is said, this now has less value to me than it did before. The very things we ignore or deliberately depreciate are as filled with spirit, are as filled with the divine, as the things we love and appreciate. When we depreciate anything, when we depreciate the, the presence of God in anything, 
we not only make God less important in our lives, we shut off the faucet, if you will, of good that's pouring into our lives. Orison Sweat Marden, an early New Thought writer, wrote about this mindset. He said, when we're in this state of mind, we don't seem to be able to appreciate the fact that everywhere in the universe, like produces like, that whatever thought we sow, we must reap in kind, that the sour, gloomy, pessimistic seed sowing, sowed in the garden of the mind must produce its own peculiar fruit. The man or woman who uses up vitality in complaining, finding fault with circumstances, kicking against fate, who is always protesting that there's no justice in the world, that person is not rewarded. Appreciation and gratitude are, are simply the, the key to opening up the door of abundance in our lives. It's kind of like an electromagnet. You know, when, when we put, everybody knows I think what an electromagnet is. Electromagnet has a bar of iron and it has wire wrapped or copper wire wrapped around it. And they put a current through the, the bar, through the current, through the copper wire, and that magnetizes the bar of iron. It becomes a very powerful magnet. The same thing is true with us. When we start recognizing and appreciating the divine in everything around us, our minds become like a powerful spiritual electromagnet drawing to us that which we are appreciating. And by the way, that which we depreciate is, is repelled, it's pushed away. <clears throat> the more we appreciate, the more we open ourselves to spirit. The more we open ourselves to spirit, the more we open ourselves to that which we are appreciating. In the Gospels, Jesus said, uh, when, he, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he began his, his, his prayer, his powerful, powerful affirmative prayer of resurrection for Lazarus by saying, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. As Terry said last week, um, Meister Eckhart, the great German mystic, uh, once was heard to say, if the only prayer you ever said was thank you, that would be enough. And Alan Cohen, uh, writer and teacher Alan Cohen, has said appreciation is the highest form of prayer, for it acknowledges the presence of good wherever you shine the light of your thankful thoughts. You can't truly receive good in your life until you're actively participating in the receiving. And that active participation starts with our appreciating what we already have. Many people have likened it to tuning in a radio station uh, in talking about our connection to spirit. And I love this analogy. As I've shared with you guys before, um, occasionally on Friday nights, my parents would go out. Uh, my father was the deputy vice commander of the local American Legion post, and he would, he and my mother would go to the to the American Legion where they had a whole mm, illegal casino, <laughs> and they would go and and drink and play slot machines. That was that was their idea of fun, or at least my mother's. Uh, and my brother and I would spend the night with my grandparents, and um, who lived practically next door. And uh, on Friday, on those Friday nights, after my brother fell asleep, my grandfather and I together would listen to um, the Gillette Friday night fights on the radio. Uh, I'm sure that some of you re remember that, you know, to look sharp, to feel sharp, et cetera. And um, my grandmother would make us a great big bowl of popcorn back in those pre-microwave days, cooked on the stove with lots of Crisco and salt. And, and, um, and at nine o'clock when the fights came on, my grandfather would let me tune their great big Crosley Council radio to, to WLS in Chicago, 890 on the dial as I recall. 
And I would twist that big knob and I would get all these squawks and screeches and, and, and voices and, and I'd have to mess around with it. My grandfather, who was not a very patient guy, would patiently wait for me to find the station. And when I did, then the two of us would sit and eat this bowl of popcorn and listen to the fights together. And it's one of my favorite memories of my grandfather. I don't know why, but it is. The spiritual universe is exactly like that. All the possibilities, all the potentials in the universe are in the spiritual ethers all around us. And all we have to do is tune our mental receiver to those frequencies. See, WLS was always on the radio. So were hundreds of other stations in Chicago. But you had to tune your receiver to find it. And that's the same thing that's true with us. The problem may be that you haven't recognized it yet. So maybe this will help. Two old friends ran into one another walking down the street. And one of them said to the other, my gosh, you look terrible. You look like you're on the verge of tears. What's wrong? And the other person said, uh, let me tell you, three weeks ago, my uncle died. And, and he, he, he left me $20,000. And the guy said, and, and that's got you down? He said, wait, two weeks ago, a cousin I didn't even know died and left me $75,000. And the first guy said, okay, I don't understand. What's bothering you? And he said, last week, my sister died and left me $300,000. And the first man said, okay, I really don't understand. You're gonna to have to explain to me why that's so terrible. And he said, this week, nothing. When we don't appreciate what we have in our lives and we keep criticizing and looking for something else, we are shutting off that flow. We are depreciating the presence of God in our lives. Terry talked last week about a, about a rampage of appreciation. I know it can be hard right now for some people. Some of us have no trouble at all appreciating it because the election resolved all of our concerns and worries. And for some of us, it increased our worries and concerns because we had hoped for a different result. For those of us that find it easy, we find it easy now. But you notice how outside circumstances seem to control whether we appreciate what's in our lives or not. Instead of a rampage of, of appreciation, when outside circumstances make us feel like we can't find the divine presence anywhere. Instead of a, a rampage of appreciation, it's more like a, a lethargy of appreciation, a dearth of appreciation. I may have said this before, but I, I, I recently saw a man, a homeless man with a sign um, on El Camino in a Tascadero that said 2020 sucks. And I think it sucks for all of us. I think we would all agree with that. But there are things to appreciate that are all around us. We can start this moment to recognize our good. If necessary, we can make a gratitude list every day. Uh, we can start with, I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. There's a wonderful scene in the, in the old movie, um, the Milagro Beanfield War. It was the very first movie Robert Redford ever directed. And, and in, this, in the movie, there's an old man, um, old Mexican-American, because it takes place in, in New Mexico, 
who wakes up in the morning and he kneels down at his little altar by his bed and says, thank you, God, for letting me wake up. We need to appreciate that we've woken up this morning. And then we have to add a dose of, I have a place to live. I have a roof over my head. It may not be everything I want, but it's a roof. Mix in some, I have enough to eat. Some of us have more to appreciate in that area than others. Then improvise. Start listing everything you can think of that brings you joy, that you appreciate. Because that's how you open the floodgates of good in your life. Then continue throughout the day to look for things to appreciate. Look for them. Terry and I, and I think Terry has mentioned this, put out a bird feeder out in, out in our backyard that we can sit and watch off of our screened porch. And we appreciate those beautiful little birds so much. We've gone out of our way to create something that we can appreciate. Look for those things. But if you have trouble doing this, if you're so depressed that you, that you can't find anything to appreciate, and in fact, they're depreciating everything, here's some suggestions for you of things that we never think about appreciating and giving thanks for. The first thing is buttered toast. Think about it. You put, my favorite is, is and Terry's also, is uh, Brian's sourdough bread. And, and you, 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 you toast that thing and it comes out crispy brown and you put a big thick layer of butter on it and it melts in, not margarine, butter. And then when you eat it, you just, you take that first bite, maybe with a cup of your favorite hot beverage and you just savor that flavor, savor the scent of toast, of hot toast, it smells wonderful and it tastes good. And speaking of hot beverages, um, the first cup of tea or coffee in the morning, learn to savor that. Many of us gulp down that first cup because we're getting dressed for work, we're doing whatever. Don't, if you have to get up five minutes early and sit down with that cup of coffee or tea or whatever your favorite hot beverage is and, and really savor it, smell it. Smell the scent of it. If you drink coffee or black tea as I do, uh, it, 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 the, the scent is wonderful. Actually, the scent of coffee is much more palatable than the taste of coffee when it comes right down to it, <laughs> for me anyway. Um, but savor that. Just sit there and smell the aroma, feel the heat of the cup in your hands or the mug. And then after you've had that first sip, say, ah, like in the commercials, like in the commercials, really appreciate it. The third thing is warm autumn nights. Sitting outside and warm autumn nights when there's not hot, not like hot summer nights, but warm autumn nights when there's a, there's a, 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 a high tone of cool in the air and the breeze blows over you and you're sitting outside and you're listening to the crickets and maybe you're listening to frogs uh, and, and maybe if you live in town like most of us do, you can hear the traffic noises. Did you ever notice that traffic sounds different at night than it does during the day? There's something just different about the sound of it and I don't know why that is, but appreciate it. Maybe it's a dog barking in the distance, or maybe not in the distance. We've got one next door that barks at night. But appreciate that experience of nighttime and how different it is from the daylight. If you're near the ocean, what does the surf sound like? And then as you sit there outdoors in the nighttime, Feel the, the air moving, the breeze, 
as it moves your hair or your clothing. Just feel it and enjoy it and appreciate it. And here's one we rarely think about. Um, and unless you've been in the military or you, you're, you're into backpacking, and that's clean socks. Clean socks. Enjoy the feel of pulling those clean socks up on your feet and up over your ankles, and they feel like they embrace your feet and your ankles. They seem to warm up your whole body. And, and they make everything feel warmer and more comfortable. I have a pair of uh, old fashioned slipper socks that I wear in the winter time. I love them. I didn't even know they still made them until I found them on Amazon. They're wool and they have a leather sole. And when I pull those up on my legs, it instantly warms up my whole body and it, and it, and it, encases me in that warmth. And in the mornings here at our house, we don't turn on the heat at night. We don't leave it on, we turn it off. So when we get up in the, when I get up in the morning, I'm invariably the first one up, it's cold in the house. And so I put on my hoodie and I slip on my slipper socks and it warms me as I warm up the rest of the house. Find the things that you can appreciate, whether it's these simple things, these, which are just mindfulness exercises after all, or it's something else in your life. Find the things you can appreciate and let go of the things you depreciate. Let your appreciation increase the flow of the divine in your life and you'll be transmitting the highest vibration of spiritual energy throughout your day and calling to you, calling to you, attracting to you everything you seek. Louise Hay said, the more grateful you are, the more you have to be grateful for. The more grateful you are, the more you have to be grateful for. Hmm. Why don't you join me right now in a, in a prayer of appreciation? Ah, close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Just take a deep breath and relax. Let this last week and all of the tensions, fears, and stresses go. And know with me that there's one divine source, one divine life, one divine perfect right action that fills the universe. I know that I am one with that, for I am one of the universe, and all things exist within it, within the creator of that universe. I know that that all good that it is, that the divine right action that it is, flows through me as me manifesting in my life as I open myself to it. I know that what I appreciate always opens me to receiving more of that divine good. And for that, I am so grateful. I so appreciate this wonderful universe we live in this wonderful creative power within me and with everyone, this wonderful creative power that opens me to accepting the all good in the universe. 
I appreciate and I give thanks for all that good. I've spoken my word of love into the law. The law has impelled itself, has been impelled into motion. And the outcome is already there. It's already demonstrated. I have only to accept it. And I do that by saying, thank you. I appreciate this. And I release it and I let go. And so it is. I believe in God, absolute and mighty. God is all there is. Everything is God. I believe the kingdom of heaven is within us. God is all there is. Everything Thoughts affect the world around us. I believe we're all connected to a universal mind. And so it is. I believe the spirits forever and expanding. God is all there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Frank. It was awesome. I appreciate you, by the way. Um, <clears throat> beautiful talk. A, a wonderful topic for the month to help keep us in that place of gratitude. And we, we need that every day, really, every day. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you to the musicians who never fail to, uh, to move us, to lift us, to to raise us and, and, and actually bring balance and harmony into our lives. We are so grateful for that. And I mentioned this so many times that um, I don't, I, it's countless the number of times that whatever is played here on Sunday that invariably I will walk around the house thinking that melody all through, throughout the whole week. So it, it, it serves us well beyond just this, this Sunday gathering. Thank you for that. Uh, to all of you. And, you know, a, a special shout out to Jim T uh, Townsend. You know, he has been our music director for years now, and he has written and brought us an incredible uh, storehouse 
of music and inspiration. And I, I am so grateful to Jim Townsend and to the musicians for their talent uh, and for their willingness to share and bring what they have to us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to Ron Gallagher. I have to thank Ron every week because he's the glue that keeps these uh, Sunday gatherings uh, together. And he's also helps keeps things uh, moving, keeps them kind of oiled uh, through uh, editing and then uh, helping getting these uh, uh, talks onto YouTube. Uh, Ron and, and Frank do that together. So thank you, Ron. Uh, a couple of announcements. Next week, Timber Hawkeye will be joining us. Uh, we love it when Timber comes. Um, he, excuse me, Gabriel is leaving my lab now. Uh, he, he provides such a wonderful perspective and I'm so grateful to him uh, uh, for coming and, and, and sharing the way he does. He's so pure and honest and, and clear. And so he will be joining us next week. Uh, the first Sunday in uh, December, Ministerial student uh, Delon Richenberg is going to be uh, speaking on the first Sunday, and we look forward to hearing Delon. Um, it, it, like Frank mentioned last week, if you've ever been around Delon or you've ever been in his presence, uh, and he's he's moving into prayer or he's moving into meditation, you literally cannot resist going there with him. He has a way of just taking you um, to those beautiful deep. Uh, places. I always think of Delon as, as being like this vast ocean. He's deeply connected to the waters, and I feel that. So Delon will be speaking the first Sunday in December. The second Sunday in December, uh, our, our own practitioner, Jan Lynch, will be speaking. And there's a reason for that. You know, we have uh, several published authors in this community. Uh, Patricia Alexander uh, we haven't seen Patricia lately. I, I've seen her her picture on there, but Patricia has been a member of this community for many years, and um, her her book of comforts is, has been on uh, Amazon for years. We have it available in our bookstore as well. The book of comforts was written by Patricia Alexander. Uh, Reverend Art Scott wrote essays from the soul. That's available here uh, in our bookstore. Published author uh, Annie uh, Rohrbach uh, Walker. Her book, Conscious Order, is available through our bookstore. Uh, she's a member of our community. We, uh, she actually did a workshop on her book. Uh, and now Jan, Jan Lynch, who's going to be speaking the second Sunday in December, has a book coming out uh, that she wrote. Uh, and the name of the book is, and I want to make sure that I say it absolutely correctly, The Divine Flow of Abundance. And um, she's going to be speaking on her book. Uh, the book will be available uh, it's just now being uh, released, and so it will be available to all of us uh, maybe after Wednesday, but uh, we'll let you know wh when and where um, you can you can purchase the book. It is a lovely, lovely book. I don't want to give anything away about what it is. She, she can share that with you, but um, it, 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 it's daily inspirations, and so... Um, we're looking forward to hearing what she has to say and uh, finding out more about her book. So that will be the second Sunday in December. Beautiful lineup, beautiful lineup. Looking forward to that. Um, reminder also that prayer is ongoing, ongoing. You know, we receive prayers on Sundays. We receive prayers during the week um, and, and we are praying. And this is why we're here. We're not, we're, this is not a sacrifice. This is nothing that we do that's beyond what we want to do or what we're called to do. And so if there's an issue in your life and you need prayer support for it, please let us know. You can uh, send us an email to awakeningways, awakeningways uh, at the grid.net. Is that the right address? Awakeningways at the grid.net. Uh, and just in your subject line, be sure to put uh, that this is a prayer request. Uh, and we will we will get on it. And there are 12 of us that are, uh, we've been doing this for a while. And we have had a great deal of success and a great many, many healings. And so go ahead and do that. And we will hold you in prayer for a week. And, and if you find that you need 
more assistance, then just fill out it. Just let us know the following week. Um, we are here for you. This is a community, a spiritual community, and we hold the community and we hold each and every one of you in prayer. So that's why we're here. Um, also, we are also a community because, because you're here and because you financially support us. Um, we couldn't do what we do if there wasn't a way to pay for, for uh, our necessities and you make that possible. And we are so, so very grateful and thankful for those gifts that you bring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we will be here again next week and, and uh, Timber will be here. I'm not sure if he's speaking on the seat of awakening or what he will be speaking on, but we'll let you know. Um, I love the way he's just in the flow of things. And so I'm just excited to have him here. Uh, so with that, I just want to take a minute and um, invite you uh, for this closing blessing to just close your eyes for a moment and just take a big, deep breath and let it out. And allow your mind to open and allow your heart to open. And just let a few of those amazing gifts that are in your life to float into your mind. All of those things, so many things and people and, and experiences and just a few of them, just let them drift in. And if you find yourself smiling, that's good. Feel that deep sense of appreciation. And so we give thanks for all of this good in our lives. We appreciate each and everything. And we know that all this good continues to grow, expand, and multiply as we increase our own level of appreciation. And in the words of Neville Goddard, isn't it wonderful? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. <laughs>